today I'm going to show you how an artificial grassland like this reverts itself naturally back into woodlands. Lots of interesting herbs grow on this very short grass on the moors, like this eyebright. Um, you use it for improving eyesight, but also you carry a piece to improve psychic powers. It doesn't grow everywhere, but it does grow on the moors. So cows and sheep have been here for 8,000 years, and before that it was all forest up to a height of 400 meters above sea level or 1,300 feet. Um, and of course the forest is always trying to come back. And uh, one way it does this is with advancing armies of perennial plants like this bracken here. Uh, bracken spreads quickly over grassland and it creates a safe haven um, for little trees to seed themselves where grazing creatures can't get to them and then the process of reforestation has begun. Another advancing army, but this time of a small woody perennial shrub, is heather. Uh, it's, um, there's two types of heather. There's erica heather, which is uh, this one, like a bell heather with a little bell flowers. Um, and then there's tenuna, um, which is this one, which isn't quite out yet. Uh, and they're, um, and they, they, uh, it's spread over a vast area. This is Erica, the bell heather. And as you see, it's all little bells. Whereas this one is Kaluna, um, and uh, it's not quite out yet. The two almost always grow together. Down here is wild thyme, Thymus vulgaris. So gorse is probably the best plant to quickly reforest an area. It's really prickly, the grazing creatures can't get into it, and trees can just be protected by its prickles. Here is a little hawthorn tree, uh, which is protected uh, by, by this. and. Um, and then over here, you can see how another hawthorn tree is growing here, and uh, an oak tree, and how in 30 years' time, how different this place will look when all these canopies join together in its small woodland. But further uphill you go, um, the less trees and gorse there are, and it's also a bit windy, but one thing you do get a lot of up here is mushrooms. This little rocky outcrop is called Coombstone. down in the bottom of the valley. It always starts down by the river and then works its way up to the top of the hill last of all. Here you can see the little thin strip of woodland going up the valley bottom and the bare grassy slopes either side. And when we come down, there is Bobby, uh, under the trees, it's like a completely different world in here. So the trees that arrive first are known as pioneer trees. These are certain tougher species which come through the gorse and they're the first trees on the site. And like these rowan trees here, these are pioneer trees. And all the trees that grow up in the highland in this uh, acidic soil, in these harsh conditions, they all grow really dwarfed and stunted like these ones. 
Up here at higher altitudes, all the wild flowers come out later, like these foxgloves. Because the climate is so wet, moss and ferns grow up the trees. And these are bilberries. I don't think they've got any fruit on them, but they're related to blueberries and they grow wild up here. They usually produce fruit a bit smaller than blueberries um, in about a month or two. Another pioneer species of tree is the hawthorn. Very prickly, it can defend itself against grazing creatures. Um, and it comes up through the gorse and it makes a prickly protective layer which in a bigger tree, like an oak tree, can then grow up through. And another species of pioneer tree is the willow tree. Further down the valley, um, the trees are way more advanced. Um, not a full-on woodland yet, but getting there. Um, this is the West River Dart. And um, there you go, that's natural reforestation taking place on Dartmoor. Um, so if you liked today's video, please like and subscribe. And if you press the little me, then you can see my other videos. See you next time.